Ooh, that's a hot mug, guys. Hey guys, Jeremy here with my review for Avatar 2. This is a film that's been 13 years, 13 years in the making. It still is something that I'm processing in terms of the fact that we did in fact get the sequel. I actually was slightly hesitant that we would ever get it. Despite the fact that the first film made $2 billion and was a incredible feat in CG achievement and rendering a false world to make it real. Uh, not only with the visual elements, but the sound design, James Horner's score absolutely helping create that mysticism of the Pandora planet. I just didn't think it was going to happen because it was just taking so goddamn long to have happen. Cameron went on another like hiatus of making movies. First hiatus he did was from 1997 to 2009 between Titanic and Avatar. Then he went on another hiatus for even a longer amount of time because I think he's just going to commit himself to Avatar for the rest of his career, which... I mean, I guess. This film follows Jake Sully and Natiri and their children. Uh, he's become accustomed to the ways of the planet. He's basically just living his best life, but then forces beyond his control come to the planet and he is forced to kind of go into hiding with his family. And that's where we introduce the water people, the water Navi people. That culture, fish out of water, literal element is reintroduced into the film, but it's not really through him, it's through his children. The children are the reason why you're really hooked into this film. Some of them are a bit stubborn, some of them are a bit, you know, strong headed, but that's this mixture of Jake, who is a human, and teaching his children, you know, human ideologies, human uh, idioms and wordings, and then is their mother, uh, teaching them the Navi way and that culture. So it's a mixture of the two. Children of this species and this world going through their own kind of coming of age, figuring out who they are, what they are to not only themselves, but to their father, because there is a connection, but also a disruption between them and Jake, but also how they are proving themselves to this other way of life, this other species. Down to the brass tacks of it, it's still a very visually engaging movie. I was kind of surprised that I was as visually engaged with this film as I was. Something that admittedly has happened with us. It's been 10 years. It's been over 10 years since the first film came out. So the idea of 3D has gotten so overused, but that's not Cameron's fault. That's studios latching onto something to make more money. Uh, the use of CG in films has become over most to the point where now uh, visual effects teams are being overworked so poorly that we're getting big major movies with really bad CG. So we're kind of at that point where we don't care about big CG spectacles anymore. Cameron does give you something to look at. However, the one thing that this film definitely needs to be noted in terms of the narrative department is that it's almost the same movie. It's not the same movie in terms of how the characters grow and how the characters interact with each other, but when you look at it from a very, very basic level, it is almost beat for beat. Funnily enough, that didn't bother me too much. It bothered me a little bit maybe when I said it out loud, but has his dialogue improved? Oh god no. James Cameron still seems to insult people from a PG-13 1995 movie. I don't understand how he has not gotten better at this and considering there was four fucking writers for the screenplay and five for the story and yet some of these people are still calling each other butthead <laughs> some of the characters some of the villains in this movie look like cartoon villains but the main villain aspect of the film i actually enjoyed even though I felt it was cheap, again, more than I thought I would. That's probably something that Cameron is always going to do well with. Even if the story's a bit cruddy, even if the story is a bit basic, he still gives you something that is entertaining. The Abyss, I love that movie. I really do. But it's a very basic movie, but it's such an interesting film in terms of the element of being underwater, being in the deep sea, and the mystery behind what's going on with the presence that's down there and all of the hostility that's happening all around it. Terminator is essentially a robot goes back in time to try and kill someone, yet that's such an entertaining movie. He's really good at just building a blockbuster. He's good at building an entertaining movie regardless of whether the story is anything worthy of being decent. 
The part that just, I have to talk about this one because it just boggles me so much is the fact that they got an almost nobody to be the composer for this film. You look at the guys in the IMDb credits, he doesn't have much. Now, obviously they couldn't bring James Horner back because he's gone. He passed away in that plane crash that happened, like, what? Like half a decade ago or even more so i do feel that a lot of the music in this movie is just copy and paste of james horner's work james horner did a absolutely bitchin job with the first movie but i don't think this guy adds anything new he just does like i don't know somewhat side covers of whatever was done before and that's his like his commitment I was slightly let down in that element, and it's purely just because James Horner is not around. The guy was a fantastic composer, a great person of his craft, and the fact that we do not have him anymore is a tragic loss, and the fact that we did not get to see him contribute more to the Avatar films was a bit of a loss. But in the end, The Way of Water, should you see it? I guess. I went and saw the first one I think four times. Uh, the first time because I was just so blown away, and then the second time wanting to just see the, the story and the visuals again. And then admittedly the other two times was because I like Stephen Lang's character so much, even though he's a cartoon villain. He's just so entertaining. I was wanting to see some of that element in this film. I think the thing that I'm trying to say is that this film will have faults. It's not like the Citizen Kane in terms of storytelling. Good Jesus, no. Is it visually entertaining? Yes, it is. It may not be as visually engaging as it was the first time around because this is technology that while it is super duper impressive, it's not new anymore. It is just a upgrade of what was the first film, but it's still fun. I enjoyed the climax. I enjoyed the lead up to it. I kind of liked the bits of here and there of the film um i wasn't bored ever yeah it's a passable movie so my final rating for avatar 2 the way of water is a four out of seven yeah i enjoyed it i thought it was okay am i gonna go see it again probably not um i'm actually kind of surprised because there's maybe i would watch maybe the latter half of the film but that, that's kind of it otherwise guys those are my thoughts. Sorry if I rambled there, but I guess that was just kind of the best way for me to come across with it. What do you guys think? Have you guys seen the movie yet? What are your thoughts on the movie? Give me your thoughts in the comments down below and let's have a discussion. Otherwise, guys, I hope you enjoyed this review. I hope you guys are getting ready for Christmas. I hope you're all doing well. And if you like the video, leave a like. And if you're interested in more, subscribe. Until then, see you guys next time.